the clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong, but he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it, to take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion, and he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. Renato finally realized that Lapino was a traitor to the cause. And maybe Renato could use that somehow. Ah, Lapino. Apparently, the mad rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lapino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. Lapino's frantic message said that the Ravens were going to kill him for being a rebel spy. And that he had a clever plan. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Or so Lapino had told him over the far speaker anyway. Lapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had... had everybody fled the ravens? Have you ever felt you were just going round in circles? Bernardo felt like that. Renato had been here, at this exact place, at this exact time. But this time, there were so many more ravens. Landing everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. If they got to Lapino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. 
If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Well, unless he really was a traitor, obviously. Then they'd probably pin a medal on his chest. He was more and more extraordinary. Dirty and bloody, Renato finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Renato recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we see this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We... Captures Zenobia, we find out what she knows, and that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who happened to also be a deadly sorcerer, and, oh, his only daughter? Ah, that would be worth it. And it would be nice to see her. He always had a soft spot for her. And he felt sure she had one for him. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. To make the Sky Ripper, the Transcendent Emperor had wrapped an armature around the eye of a god. Bernardo had already let that armature slip away to save Lapino's life. But even its core, the eye torn from a god, surely they could fashion a great weapon from that. The core of the Sky Ripper? Lapino's excited. That's an actual thing that we can just go and get. He's been busy. He sure had. Renato told him all the things he'd been up to. Soon they got to talking about old times, about wages they'd won and lost, and scrapes they'd barely got out of. It was good to be back with his friend. True, the core was capable of terrible, uncontrollable destruction. But this time, he was sure it would work great. It's beautiful here, thought Renardo. It was nice to be back with his old war buddy. All right, Lapino was a traitor. But still, it was good company. Ah, Zenobia. Now that he knew she still loved him, he wanted to go back to her. But that hadn't worked out, had it? Maybe it was time to find the core of the Sky Ripper. He needed some way to break the ice with this wall, so to speak. There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. And I wondered if death was nothing more but a portal to another plane of existence. Uh, he didn't particularly want to find out.
Renato felt wrong all over. He could feel an almost palpable sickness in the air. And if the land could have tumors, they would look like these monstrous crystals. The forest was quieter than it had been. There were insects, but few birds. He didn't count the ravens. Renato smelled sick animals and dying ones. No healthy ones. Getting a bad feeling about this, Renato thought. Maybe Lapina was right. Maybe he should have kidnapped Zenobia instead of coming here. As he held the radiant icosahedron, Renato felt queasy, like dozens of tiny worms were nibbling his insides. It wasn't healthy to be so close to the eye of a god. How could he use it? He could take it to the observatory. The scientists there could tell him how to harness its ancient power. But honestly, Renato ached to get away from it. He brought the core back with him to the Farfarer. But honestly, Renato ached to be rid of it. Tell you what, said Lupino, I'll take it to the observatory. You attack the Imperial Outpost. The Imperial Outpost was a vital communications node. Taking it could shatter the Empire's ability to coordinate. And it would be full of secret plans and maps and maybe even rebel prisoners. It was a good target for a hero like Renato. But... What if Lupino lost the core to the Empire? That could be a good thing, couldn't it? Was Renato ready to take that risk? Maybe it was better if he brought the core to the scientists himself. Lupino was a touchy rabbit. Renato knew that. You're brave, I know, Renato said. But this is what I was hired to do. Oh, well, at least let me run ahead and warn them you're coming. Renato wondered if Lupino was up to no good. What if the rabbit warned the Empire instead? Oh, but Lupino wouldn't betray him like that. Not again. Before it'd been a fluke, right? They finished the trip to the Nexus in silence. He would offer Lupino a chance to betray him, or not to. His old friend deserved another chance to prove true. All right, Renato said. Go. As Renato watched Lupino vanish on the horizon, he could feel nausea building in him. He felt ill. Could his knees really be aching this much? But how could he have handed the core off to Lupino? That was a recipe for disaster.
Bernardo felt worse. All his joints were aching now. He'd been through beatings that felt better than this. So the core had a kind of poison that could harm you without even touching you. That's new. Well, it had power. The Rebellion needed something with power. And how was this any worse than a sword wound? Well, a death by sword was sudden and fair. This was just squalid. A piecemeal death, like old age. A very clever engineer named Elon Musk had got his start making floating platforms. Not many people knew that. any loot, and no one ever wanted the feathers. The observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists everywhere. Bernardo found the mad rabbit cowering under a desk. The ravens, they must have known we were coming, said Lapino. How did you... Well, you see, I was doing a card trick with my lucky deck, and I kind of bobbled the card, so I went under the desk to gather them up, and boom! I guess we'll have to take the car straight to the secret base. Renato wasn't sure he believed that. But Lapita was talking so fast. He always seemed to make sense. The secret rebel base. Yes. They had engineers there. But wait. Calaveras. The sage in the mountains. Maybe he would know what to do with the naked core. Killing him. He needed help. The sage Calaveras had given him the maps to find the armature and the core. If anyone knew the true name of the Transcendent Emperor, if anyone knew how to assemble the Sky Ripper, Calaveras did. If anyone could heal Renardo and render the core safe, at least to its bearer, surely it was he. The base of the mountain was the only safe place for a landing. He would have to continue on foot, muscles aching. Calaveras was a scholar, not a doctor. Could he really save Renardo from the poison radiating from the lost god's eye he was so recklessly carrying? Oh, 
die. Even if he survived. No one would write ballads about the fox whose knees ached forever, would they? Not unless he paid for it. He hated paying for publicity. For a moment, they're not a wish that somebody had been watching. walking through the living mountains. There was always noise up ahead. Insects, birds, the croak and flutter of ravens arranging ambushes. But close by, there was only the breeze and the trickle of melting snow, as if every living thing was holding its breath for his poisonous burden to move on. around the room yelling, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's how we do it. It was something he liked to do, but only after he'd killed all the witnesses. Platforms were great. Murata wanted one for his house. Notice the lever. Time was running out for the rebellion. They might already be fighting the Imperial fleet. Everything him and Calaveras's ability to turn an exiled god's eye into something deadly. <laughs> the core, splendid, croaked Calaveras. Where's the armature? Right, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't need it. <laughs> no, I don't. It's just a professional interest. We've got much better prismatics than the old TE ever did. So Calaveras was an arcane engineer. He fussed at the core all day. He wrapped it with silver chains, and in front of it, he placed a huge round ruby so that it looked like a monstrous floating eye. Ah, so, what is it? Yeah, I call it the Oculum. It's my very first death ray. And it won't poison me. Oh, no, no, no. It's completely safe now. Anything I should watch out for? Yeah, try to avoid pointing at any mirrors. 
As he loaded the oculum onto the Farfarer, Bernardo was a little concerned about Calaveras. People who were utterly sure of themselves he had found were either experts or horribly wrong. Or both. But Renardo only needed to fire the oculum once. He only needed to destroy one ship, the Emperor's ship. And the war was over. Renardo plunged into the Imperial fleet. He felt the oculum humming. He no longer felt sick. This was going to be fun. Or at least, it was going to be over. Renato resisted the temptation to fire the oculum until the time came. It sensed its arcane energies, yearning to escape the sage's wrappings. But it wasn't eating him alive. So that was a plus. He felt good about himself. He'd saved a friend, he'd helped the rebels, he'd relied on himself, but he'd listened to others. He felt like the right sort of hero. Wise, yet decisive. Calaveras had been so sure it would work. Maybe he could fire it just a few times. No harm in that. But only when he absolutely needed to. There was an inscription on the platform. Balaleka lessons, with an address. getting tired. The core was no longer eating at him, but he still felt weak. His stamina was shot. But he had the oculum. When the ravens swarmed him, it would sometimes fire its death ray. It seemed to be warming up too, firing more and more often. Maybe he should let it cool off. Yeah, he decided to stop using it entirely.
hard. The oculum was still hot to the touch. He almost thought it was getting even hotter. Well, that was ridiculous, of course. Anyway, he'd only to fire it one more time, and then he could chuck the whole contraption into the abyss. And the Emperor's ship was now in range. Renardo squinted. He could make out the line of ravens protecting the ship. Zenobia in front, conjuring. And on the deck, yes, that was his Imperial Majesty, pacing in his golden armor. Renardo lined up his shot and fired. Caught in the beam, the ship burst into flames. The ravens and Zenobia exploded. The Emperor, too, exploded. Renardo waited for the beam to stop, but it only got brighter and the oculum hotter. Frantic, Renardo pulled the oculum towards the abyss. The ruby burst into flames. The shiny metal casing glowed, then melted. That was good. Now the cork could cool off, right? Renardo ran. The blast incinerated him instantly, along with both fleets. The shockwave could be felt across all Erda. That winter, with neither empire nor rebels to rule them, the island slid into banditry, and so began the Second Age of Darkness.